when you guys were filming this, it was around the time that the Hackney riots um, yeah. happened. So what was your experience of that? From what I remember, I actually remember that we had to, there was like a law that stopped us from filming outdoor scenes that involved any sort of violence, anything that involved like a knife or fight or gun or anything, because it happened, like where we was filming was like literally five minutes away from Mayor Street where it all literally kicked off. So we wasn't allowed to film anything exterior that involved any violence. So it sort of, you know, put us on edge. Yeah, yeah, that, that's exactly what happened. They, they passed the law, I think it was in London or maybe in the whole country, but certainly in London where we couldn't do any any scenes that, as they quote unquote, that were inciting a riot. So that includes a fake yeah. riot or fake violence. So, And that really screwed um, a couple of the scenes. So actually there's a, I believe there's there was a big night before rewrite, which was the uh, I think it's the the scene where the dog dies. Yeah, and so basically that, believe it or not, is a studio. That's oh actually, really? Yeah, mm. it's actually the exteriors of um, Wimbledon Studios, and it was this. Uh, <laughs> 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 it was it's all coming back to you now. Yeah, no, I, uh, yeah, no, it's all coming back. Do you remember? <laughs> it was literally. It was like being on Ramsey Street. Yeah. Like it was. <laughs> Yeah. It was just so wrong. It just it was wasn't like flower Hackney. pots. Yeah, there were flower pots and like nice little light <laughs> windows. Yeah. And the, uh, the 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 design team did an amazing job. Just did an all night of the night before, mm. and made it into Hackney. You know the kind of Hackney that's in in the film. So mm. it had a big effect. There was a couple of big rewrites actually that Sally had to do, and, and the team, the crew, were just amazing to get round mm. that last minute. And what mm. is it like for you to revisit this film a couple of years later? Because I've I mean, have you watched it a lot of times since it came out? <laughs> I've watched it every single screening that I've been invited to. So. I just like to sit at the back and watch people's like head movements and reactions and see how they feel. So you're not watching the movie, you're watching people watch people. the movie? <laughs> no, I've watched the movie enough times now, so I get to see people's reactions. How many times have you seen it? Oh, God. <laughs> Over 15 times. Maybe. Really? Wow. I've watched it on my own sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, but it's sad, though, because I always go past the area where we filmed it. Oh yeah. And um, uh, like the estate, I, I don't, I don't know if they've changed the colour of the estate, but I know that they've definitely took away my tree. <laughs> and there was a tree where the scene Your where tree? I was with, I, yeah, it's my tree. <laughs> I was with Aisha, and where the scene where I gave her the necklace, and we done that under the tree. Um, that's that's completely gone now. So yeah, sad. That is quite sad. Yeah. <laughs> um, so and they no, on, they no, changed the green on. rooms into a barber's now. Where we was chilling was across the road from where we was filming, and now it's like transformed into like this cool. Um, hairdressers. Is it hipster hairdressers? Yeah, it is. <laughs> of course. Um, and so Sally Al Hassani made this film and um, she's, she's a great filmmaker. She's working on her next project. She's doing a residency in San Francisco. But what I think is really interesting is that she's um, a female director making this film about men and about masculinity. And so I wanted to ask you, what was your experience of making that kind of a movie with a woman director? It didn't really feel like I was or, you know, getting directions from a woman or it, it just felt like she knew exactly what she was doing. She had done her research. She's kind of from that area, not the estate itself, but she was very familiar with the lifestyle and everything that was going on. Um, and she had really, really done her research. I mean, she had a lot of people who was on board who was willing to help. Like, even the guy who, um... Sorry? Sorry. What was his job? He was one of the fixers. Fixers, yeah, but even he was actually from the estate, so we sort of had a lot of people from the estate. Even a guy that was willing to let us use our dog was from the estate. He like kept coming to set every day and like show, try to show off her, like his dog doing tricks so we could like cast him for the movie. We didn't end up casting him for the movie, but it was, I don't know, it was just like, like I said, I didn't really feel like I was getting direction from I think someone it, who didn't know what they was talking about. I think it's almost irrelevant, like, and that as I, well. I think, I think like, we just... Sorry, James, do you want to just... Sorry, yeah, I think it's irrelevant. I mean, just my opinion. We were talking about this before, I mean, but it's, uh, for me, it's just, like, in some ways, like, I'm not saying your questions, but it's, like, the, the question shouldn't really be asked. Like, it's just, who f cares? Like, it's, mm. at the end of the day, like, you're either someone who understands human truth and can tell a story through cinema, or you can't, you know, whether you're what gender you are, sexuality, race, religion, mm. what football team you support, who gives a... Like, it's just, I think we've got to stop thinking about these things, you know? I mean, I understand that, like... <laughs> <laughs> I 
I wasn't asking for that, but, I wish I was <laughs> but you know, I, I do think that, like, you know, there is a there is this kind of strange thing going on at the moment, you know, and, and I, in the industry where it's a real big topic to talk about gender and ethnic minorities, and, and I think it's it's an important thing, of course, like it is in any business where there is a a problem with hiring minorities. The obvious example being, you know hit the nail on the head, female filmmakers, where I believe in film schools it's like 50-50, and in the film industry, I don't know what the percentage is, but it's gotta be somewhere in 10%, if that, who who are actually helming films, who are women. It's obviously a huge issue, but I think the, one of the issues is the way we talk about it. You know, like we were talking about this before, I just think if <laughs> Sally, you know, okay, she's a woman, Okay, she's half Egyptian. She's whatever. She lives. On, she lives on an estate for ten years. But like when I first met her, that was, I didn't. I didn't really care about that. I'd read a beautiful script that had a, a wonderful story about the strength to be yourself, you know, and the power of family love, and the fact that she was whatever she was was totally irrelevant to me. Having said that, you know, if I can speak for a little bit, you know. For seven years, she tried to get the film made, and every other financier said to her, you can't make this movie because you're a woman and it's about boys. So it should be talked about, you know, of course. But I think the way we talk about it needs to, in my opinion, slightly change, you know? It's like, just judge the movie, you know what Something I mean? Something you said yeah. earlier as well, um, if you don't mind me bringing it up, you said that if you're kind of marginalized in a way, be that kind of being a woman or being a person of color or you know, being gay, whatever, um, you can use that as your superpower. Um, There's a quote from you. Uh, <laughs> with, great, with great power comes great responsibility. Oh, <laughs> that's Batman. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I think I'll turn that off. No, I think that's true. I think you can use it to your advantage, I, I guess is what I was sort of saying. And for someone who's, I don't know if you notice, I'm half brown. Um, you know, <laughs> I'm someone who can kind of relate to that. But, you know, again, I think y you shouldn't be coming at it from that perspective. I think one of the things that people like Sally do, who happen to be a minority, you know, is brilliant, where she, she'll basically, she wasn't worried that this movie was uh, about two Egyptian lads. You know what I mean? Or she wasn't worried that it was about, as you said, men or boys. She just found a very compelling story, you know, that she wanted to tell. You know, like, it's like, I find very interesting how like sometimes people go like that there are such thing as, you know, chick flicks or like, or boy films or whatever. But it's like, since, since when did films have gender? And since it's like, it's like with race, like black films, like what, a film has a, a race, does it? <laughs> it isn't that the beauty point. of art is that it, it's totally, you know, it's, it's, it's a red. I just came back from Rome, right? And I saw the Pantheon for the first time. I don't give who that person was that made it. It's beautiful. I just don't care. I don't care, you know what I mean? And I think in films, you've got to start doing the same thing, man. I just think it's, so what, you know? But I didn't want to, I didn't want to mean it as a criticism to you. <laughs> no, not I think at it's all. a great question. I just think for me, like, it's like, that question does get asked a lot, you know? So, um, something that the film is about, if, if you know, it's not about uh, who made it um, or who didn't make it, but something that it is about is about these two brothers. And um, I think it's almost like um, an unrequited love story between them. Mm. Um, you know, it, and it's kind of about when you're young, um, particularly with, with Fadi's character, um, you just have these ideas of, of what's um, something that you can look up to, you know, what's, what's impressive or, or what's powerful. And that gets broken down when you realize that the people around you and your idols and heroes and you know, your parents, your older siblings, they're just people, they're not perfect. Mm. And I think that's what um, this film, like that's, that's what I think is most compelling about this film, about um, how it breaks down the idea of the hero and um, D kind of mythologizes that. Um, but what was it kind of like playing brothers and um, did you did you feel like your relationship when you were making the film reflected what it was in the film or um, or was it sort of like once the camera stopped rolling you were sort of Fadi and James? <laughs> it was a mixture of everything really. I feel like when I first met James uh, we didn't really know each other and we didn't really know how this was going to work but I feel like when we started creating the film and when we started even from our first scene and just getting into character and I remember there were scenes where 
James would feel no way about actually hitting me rather than acting to hit me and just like little things that would really bring out the, the realness of the scene. It's, yeah, no, the scene where I was sitting on the hill and I was like, um, I'd rather have a brother who's a bomber than, than a homer. And I remember that scene specifically, I'll never forget that scene, like the way James was hitting me was like, he, he literally kind of made me cry from how hard he was hitting me. But just little things like that just really like helped us just the chemistry was there f throughout the shoot and just everyone, it weren't even just me and James, I felt like everyone on set just helped bring that together and just, I feel like it was a, a, a collaborative thing rather than just it being me and James. Like Sally had a huge part, like sometimes she'd even take me from, like I had this thing where I'd like to watch the playback after the scene, James would never ever do that, but I'd like to watch and see my performance and then Sally would take me to the side and she would just explain to me like, that I was acting in this scene or I was doing too much in this scene and she would always say to me like less is more, less is more, keep bringing it down and I found that that just took so much pressure off me as an actor to just be able to bring it down rather than always have to act and try to impress or just try to make a, an impression and I feel like just yeah no Sally especially really helped the chemistry between me and James come together I feel. And that must have been um, quite a challenge because it was your first film and um, mm. you were street cast in this film right? Mm. Yeah so um, to kind of go from having no acting experience and then to just um, deliver this performance that's so natural and feels so real. It's very impressive. Mm. <laughs> it's amazing performance, isn't it? I well, mean, both of you, it's, it's, it's about the relationship and it's about the chemistry. It wouldn't have worked if one of you was good and the other one was less good. <laughs> yeah, no, I but, agree. But I cheated, I'd, I'd done a couple of movies. The fact that it was Faddy's first film, I think is remarkable. I mean, like, I just, I mean, I haven't seen the movie for a long time, but when I first saw it, I was just, was totally knocked over by I haven't seen a debut like that in a long, long time. And he's got amazing instincts, you know. Like he's someone who is very much in the moment. He's being very humble by saying that Sally told him to bring it down. But that was just the first couple of days because you hadn't really seen, like, a movie yeah. set, right, how it yeah, works. But, yeah. um, no, I mean, it's... Sally is a dream for any actor because she, uh, she understands human nature... I think more than probably the average filmmaker does these days. You know, a lot yeah. of it's about the visual these days, which is fine, but I think she's more about heart. About the emotion. Yeah, yeah and just, just a personal the relationship. Personal I've worked with directors yeah. since then, and it's more about like the dialogue or just making sure the scene's perfect or it looks good. But with Sally, yeah. like it, she didn't care how long it took to make the scene good. It was just making sure that it was very authentic and it was very real. Like, I always knew I had a passion for acting, but I feel like during the shoot of My Brother the Devil, I sort of found a special passion for acting and just my career and just realising that this is actually what I want to do for a living. I didn't know that that's what it was. Like, when I was filming, you can imagine it being my first film, and it was, like, this big set, and it was just it was just all crazy, and I was just so naive and just willing to try out anything. Like, I was... There was n nothing I would say no to. And, um, yeah, no, I just... I'll never forget that shoot, like, and just what it has done for me personally and just opened doors for me and just made me have something to look up to and just something to aspire to and really have a passion for. What about you, James? Uh, what was the question again, sorry? How has it changed um, you, if it has? it changed me, the film, yes. it, since then? Um, yeah, man, I mean, it was, you know, it was kind of uh, the first time... I've been working a little bit b before then and um, it was the first film I did where I actually you know, wanting to go to the Q&As and <laughs> talk about it, uh, which helps. Uh, and I think that was it's very on message. <laughs> and I really, uh, no, I'm very, very, very proud of the film. And I think Fadi will agree. I think we feel very lucky to have been in it, you know, because um, it did it did remarkably well, considering it was a tiny movie that was made for, for nothing. Um, yeah, it's really amazing that years later, you're all here and <laughs> just, oh, sorry, exactly. I did it again. You just watched it and um, yeah. it, it's endured. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, a good, it's a good film. It's timeless. But, um, <laughs> yeah, we'd, it's, it kind of helped us all, really, didn't it? It was a big deal for all of us, you know. It's really, um, yeah. it's launched all of our careers, really, and certainly myself, I wouldn't really have any sort of career if it wasn't for the film. But since then, uh, I mean, I don't think I have time to talk about everything that's happened. But It's difficult, I mean, look, I'm not a filmmaker. It's difficult to answer for Sally, but I've, I've heard this question been asked, asked a couple of times. I mean, my opinion is this. Um, 
what, why does there have to be sex or or something? I don't know what the word to use, but something that eroticism. was more eroticism in order for it to be about love, um, which I think the film is about. I think it's about love. I guess the second part is maybe you're implying that it would enhance it. It would make it even stronger a film about love if there was eroticism, as you put it. Um, so that's how I feel. I, I don't feel it really takes anything or adds anything. I think it's it's about everything else, you know, as well. Uh, I think if, it, if if there was a you know a love scene between myself and and Saeed's character, great, wonderful, but would it have added to the fact this movie is about love? I'm not sure. I think Aisha is the most interesting character in the film. Uh, <laughs> I think that at least partly because the performance is beautiful beautiful performance very very real and complex um and i think uh, it's interesting isn't it because she's a character who is muslim and has a hijab yet it's totally not pointed at with a big you know arrow as it is in a lot of films oh yeah she's she's you know? clever and funny and kind of sensual and um and yeah, none of the things that are uh, associated, none of the baggage is there that is associated. She's not too angelic and she's just real, you know, and she's, I, I think, gem I think, look, I think, to be honest, I think you're touching on, a, on an even bigger point, which is that, you know, this movie has, I don't even know, probably about six or seven uh, young British Muslims and then one uh, French Moroccan Muslim in the lead roles who are all very, very, very complex. Uh, and we're kind of shocked that a movie that had those kind of characters in the leads that did well because it's so rare, isn't it? It's very rare. That, I think, is the problem. I think it's a disgrace that there aren't enough films like this that get enough of a push from the industry and also from the audiences. I think that's kind of what I feel like is the territory that we're talking about here. And that also goes to your question as well, which I think is that there really aren't enough films that touch upon um, sexuality in all religions, not just Islam, in terms of the positive and negative responses to it as well. You know, I think it's another reason why this film was talked about a heck of a lot because Sally was, people call it bold enough, but she was just honest enough to talk about these issues that everyone really wants to talk about. But for some reason, we don't want to make enough films like this.